Hi, thanks for watching. Um, my name is Inge and I work for Red Geographics in the Netherlands. Uh, the owner is Hans van der Marvel. Uh, he's a board member of NACES and will also be presenting today. So make sure to check him out as well. Um, but today I'll be talking about my own experiences in becoming a cartographer. So first I'll introduce myself shortly and this helps with the next topic of how I got myself into this. Um, then I'll show you some of the things I've been working on and stuff I noticed. Yeah. And finally, since you all have way more experience than I do, uh, I'd love to hear some of the tips and tricks a cartographer should know about. So first, a little bit about myself. Uh, my full name is Inge van Dalen, and I'm not from Holland, I'm from the Netherlands, which is an important distinction. Uh, at home, <laughs> we have several cats. One of them even has its own Instagram account. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I like to take pictures. And since this weekend, I've been experimenting with streaming as well. Um, I've studied Chinese at Leiden University and I studied tourism in Breda, both of which have very little to do with cartography. Um, so how did I get myself into this? Um, after graduating, I started working as a policy officer for the municipality of Dordrecht. And the work as a policy officer is very vague. And despite your hard work, results are often minimally visible or it would take months to accomplish something. It's very slow and cumbersome work. Um, and I met Hans while playing sports. And after some time, he mentioned he could use some help. So I started working part-time for him in June 2019. And while working there, more and more cool projects and plans were coming up. And my other job was slowly draining the life out of me. Uh, so we decided to take the plunge. Um, since March this year, I've started working full-time for Red Geographics, um, which was probably the worst possible timing ever. Um, but luckily, Corona hasn't really impacted our jobs. We've had to cancel some trainings and then we could schedule them again. And then we had to cancel a few more. So we'll see how it goes. And in the picture, you see Hans. Um, there we are on a work trip in Luxembourg, um, perks of the job, because um, we're doing a pretty big project right now for Luxembourg, but he is presenting about that one. So watch his presentation, I'd say. Um, and now I don't have that much colleagues. I have one boss, which is Hans, and one colleague, Fehle. She's our part-time marketeer. Um, and whenever we have work meetings or discussions, it's all very fast and quick. Whenever one of us has an idea, we discuss it. And if we like it, boom, we go do it. It's so easy. It's just it helps a lot. It's much more concrete. And the work itself is to the point, which I love. Um, and another point of discussion, um, I have my business card right here. And it says that I'm a cartographer. But I was worried that this might be a slap in the face for real cartographers, because I didn't go to college or university to be one. Um, but we decided that for one, I actually do make maps. And two, I am learning to become better at it. Um, Hans gave me some, <laughs> some light reading. Yeah. <laughs> not really, but I really like Geography for Dummies. Uh, the other two I have not been able to read yet, but that will come in time. Um, if you have any literature suggestions, please let me know. Um, yeah, this way I am creating a solid knowledge base um, with information that I think any cartographer should know about. But I do realize I still have a lot to learn. Um, but it has been a lot of fun so far, but I'd love to hear your perspective on this. And then discovering my style. I am a very detailed oriented person. So for me, it's fantastic to get lost in little details on a map. Uh, on the left, you see a photo of me in action, um, checking a map for the Luxembourg project. And this time it's okay to be nitpicky. Uh, it's actually a requirement because um, what I'm doing here 
uh, is checking of uh, the placement if if the placement of the text and the numbers has been done right. And this one sheet you're seeing is part of 21 pieces in total. So you can see it's quite a time consuming job. Um, but put on some nice music and I'm in my happy place for at least a week. Although you can take it too far as well. Um, one of the things I learned is that a map is never finished. So when do you stop? Um, the other day we spoke with Nathaniel Douglas. Um, he's a cartographer based in Oregon and he explained he often deals with the same issue and he had stickers made. You can see them in the picture on the right. Um, he sent us those um, and it's an acronym that says just make the FN map, which is a great reminder. I love the stickers. Thank you, Nathaniel. Hans also introduced me to the tutorial Tom Patterson has made. And the tutorial shows where to get and how to make Landsat 8 satellite images for Adobe Photoshop. The focus is on creating natural color images that look similar to what an astronaut would see if he was looking down at Earth. But as you can see, I've been experimenting with a little bit of other colors as well. Um, and on the top left, you see uh, Nunavut in northern Canada. The top middle is um, Australia. It's near Darwin. And um, the top right is Murugui in Myanmar. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that one right. Um, the bottom left is Bahrain. The middle is the Amazon River. And the bottom right is the Yangtze River in China. And Hans often jokes he has created a monster but I don't have the heart to tell him that he actually has. Um, but I'm not the only one busy with Tom's tutorials. Um, Hans himself has been busy as well. Um, we're even looking into a new form of business for Red Geographics because um, we thought it would be fun if we could actually make products. And we made um, those leggings you see in the picture. Um, here I'm wearing Maniquagan, a crater in Canada. Um, but anything, any location on Earth can be made. Um, and you can design your own products. Anything that can have a print on it can be made. So the options are almost limitless. How cool is it to wear a location? Um, but we're curious to know what you think. We're still in a very early stage with these ideas. Um, and we want to assess whether we make products that people actually want to buy. So let me know. And next up are some of the actual maps I've made. And these two are maps of the British Isles and the Baltic states. And they show the political boundaries on country and province levels. Um, I did not create the style, but this has been my way of finding out how um, Illustrator and the publisher work, what the options are and how to recreate the styles. Um, this has basically been a practical crash course but that also works for me. Hans kind of said, here are some examples. Now go make the British Isles and go make the Baltic states. So I've been um, finding out for myself how it works because if I can understand it, I can reproduce it. But if I don't get it, it's very hard for me. Um, but, but if I don't, Hans is there to explain to me why things have to be done in a certain way. So that's very helpful. Uh, and these maps, um, as well as the other ones I'm going to show you next, are for sale on the website One Stop Map, and that's why they have a watermark. And these two maps are regional maps from a left is Melbourne, a right is Taipei, um, which is great for use as a general overview map. Um, the process for making these maps was similar to the previous ones, Hans basically said, here's an example, go figure it out. Um, I do have to say I'm happy. I could just copy the styles and didn't have to come up with them myself. Because um, so far I don't have my own style yet, but I'm sure that will come in time. And there's so much more to cartography than I could have imagined. Um, but now here are some of the things that come to mind when I think of cartography. For example, color. How do you know what colors are right? 
Um, everyone has their own preferences and what they think is beautiful. And um, your client also has his own preferences. But how do you pick the appropriate colors? There are so many aspects that can make or break your map. It can be pretty overwhelming. So how do you make those choices? And if there is, um, yeah, I, I love to learn and I want to become better at what I do. Um, so if you miss anything in this word cloud, let me know and I'll dive into it. And if you do have something you want to tell me or wanna, want me to know, um, message me on Twitter or send me an email. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed my presentation and thank you for watching. <laughs>